Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Kapil Sharma from Our Bright Skills. In this tutorial, we are going to see some important things about AWS core infrastructure. We will see what are the building blocks which we are going to use to build our AWS infrastructure. We will see some differences between traditional infrastructure versus AWS infrastructure. So we will start with that first. The first one is traditional infrastructure versus AWS infrastructure. So what is the difference between that? Well, in traditional infrastructure, we used to have our own data centers. We build our own servers, networking layers. We build our different layers to create our own data centers, right? So for different services or different layers, we, we used to have different services or different hardware used in traditional infrastructure. So we can start with the first one. The first one is security layer. So for security layer in traditional infrastructure, we were having our firewalls where we have our own set of rules. We have access control list where we define the subnets, define the routings between them. We create access, allow rules and deny rules. We have our directory services wherein we have our own set of users created. We assign the permissions to those users and manage those users. The same way in AWS, if we start using for the security layer, we are going to use security groups as a firewall, network access control list for routing and allowing denying traffic between different subnets. We are going to use AWS IAM as a service, which is the identity and access management service wherein uh, we can create our own set of users and define the permissions for those users for AWS resources. For networking layer, in traditional infrastructure, we have our own networking layer wherein we have our own subnet. We set up our switch. We create a network pipeline. We have our own routers. We have different networking devices such as Wi-Fi devices and so on. Same way in AWS services for networking layer, we are going to use VPC as a services. In VPC, we can have our own subnet. We can define routing between them. We can have, we can create route tables. We can have NAT gateways. We can assign permissions, allow deny rules. We can create network access control list in that. And on top of the networking layer, we can have ELB as a services that is elastic load balancer for the load balancing between two different services or maybe we can say elastic load balancer on top of your EC2 instances or uh, on top of any of the services you can keep. So for server layer in traditional infrastructure, we were having our own data centers. We maintain those servers. We run those servers. We create our virtual instances on top of it. So same way, if we start using AWS services, we don't have to worry about physical hardwares. What we can do is we can start immediately deploying and virtual instances on AWS. So how we can start using that. So for creating a virtual instance, you can use Amazon EC2 as a services. Amazon EC2 is Amazon Elastic Cloud Compute, where you can create your own virtual instances that is named as EC2 instances using an image file, which is named as AMI, that is Amazon Machine Image. Amazon Machine Image is basically a template which contains operating system and an application. So if you select an Amazon Machine Image, which is having Ubuntu 16.04 plus Tomcat installed on it. You can choose that image and deploy it on your instance directly. If you want to create your own custom image, what you can do is you can deploy an instance of EC2 with Ubuntu 16.04 and on top of it, you can install your own application. And after installing and configuring the configuring your application, you can create an image of that particular instance. That image will be private for you and you can use those image to create your multiple instances. And if you want that 
image to be publicly available you can make that AMI public so that everyone and anyone can use it and take benefit of AMI for storage and database layer in traditional infrastructure we have our own servers where we deploy virtual instances or maybe physical servers on top of it we create our own database servers like MySQL, MSSQL, Postgres, anything for storage we were having network access storage or maybe storage area network depending on the requirement so same way if you want to use a database service in Amazon what we can do is we can start using Amazon RDS that is relational database service we can create MySQL instances, Postgres instances and any of as per your requirement for storage in Amazon we can use Amazon EBS that is elastic block storage you can use elastic block storage with your EC2 instances Amazon EFS that is elastic file system Amazon S3 which is the storage services where you can create your own separate storage and you can link those link S3 with any of the services which you want and there are other different storage services which are available we will see in further lectures we will see AWS foundational services so what does this mean foundational services I mean foundational services means these are the services which you can bundle with each other and you can create your base foundation so for foundation you can start with different layers right so here it comes building blocks we can see different layers so initially what you will do is you can start building a layer different layers first layer will be networking layer where you can build a networking or build a subnets okay on top of it you can deploy your server layer where you can create EC2 services or maybe virtual instance you can have container you can have services which is named as lambda storage layer for storage you can use S3 you can use Glacier you can use EBS you can use EFS and on top of the server layer you can deploy your own application which can be like workspace or maybe email servers or maybe mailing services any of this right and on top of it <coughs> sorry on top of it you can have a security layer so all these layers are must to create your base right so so these are the services you can use to create your base foundation right so for compute you can use Amazon EC2 which is elastic cloud compute you can create your virtual instances AWS Lambda Amazon EC2 container services elastic load balancer AWS elastic beanstalk auto scaling for networking layer you can use Amazon VPC Amazon route 53 AWS direct connect for storage layer we can have Amazon S3 Amazon CloudFront Amazon Glacier Amazon elastic file system Amazon storage gateway AWS import exports that is named as snowball for security layer we can have AWS IAM services AWS KMS that is key management services AWS directory services AWS cloud HSM AWS WAF that is web application firewall for application layer we can have Amazon work docs Amazon workspace and Amazon work email right so these are all foundational services I mean you can club any of this you can have combination of any of the services and you can build your own foundation AWS platform services where well uh, there are tons of services which are being offered by AWS as a platform services wherein you don't have to worry about the platform it is ready-made available for you you just select those services and start immediately deploying your codes and everything right so for database there are different platform services you can have Amazon RDS Amazon DynamoDB, Amazon Elastic Cache, Amazon Redshift, Amazon Database Migration Services. So there are different groups for database. That is, there are different services for analytics. There are different services 
for application for management tools for developer tools mobile services internet of things you can use combination of any of the services and you can build your own architecture aws global infrastructure so you can see this image here you can find the global outreach of aws i mean the orange circle says these are the locations where there are data centers available working live hosting many customers currently so the orange circle says these are the regions and the availability zones which are currently available and live hosting many customers green circles these are the new regions and the new upcoming regions or maybe we can say availability zones right so this image is basically taken from aws.amazon.com you can see anytime you can go and you can visit aws.amazon.com and take the latest snapshot of it and you can see current availability zones current regions and the availability zones and the upcoming regions and the availability zones regions and availability zones so what is regions regions are basically a geographic locations each geographic location each region we can say consists of minimum two availability zones here in this image you can see this is one region and it is having three different availability zone az is means for availability zone and what are availability zones availability zones are interconnected data centers or a group of data centers or a cluster of data center which are like connected with a high speed or high throughput network and that are separated from the point of failure i mean isolated from the point of failure so that if you deploy your application in multiple availability zone and if one availability zone gets down your application will be still running from the secondary or maybe another availability zone so this is pretty much important to know and to build your architecture like how you can design your architecture and you can define multiple availability zone as per your requirement as per the latency need as per the network throughput requirement you can choose your region and you can choose mul you can choose your architecture like you if you want to deploy it in a single availability zone if you want to deploy it in multiple availability zone that depends on you in the practical lectures we will see how we can create the architecture with single availability zone and we will see the architecture which we can have multiple availability zone another is edge locations so what is edge location an edge location is where end users access services located at aws they are located in major of the cities around the world and are specifically used by cloudfront that is content delivery network and aws route 53 to distribute the content to end user with reduced latency this means there are many edge locations available across the globe which you can use to cache your content at a global level i mean if you have a website in india you can use edge location or i mean cloudfront as a services using cloudfront you can distribute your website content globally so that if your website if if loaded from us or uk the content will be served directly from the nearest edge location it is it is it is not required you to travel all the way from uk to india or maybe us to india right so this is what edge location is we will see in the practical lectures how we can use edge location and how we can distribute our contents across the globe right well that's it for this lecture guys just go through this lecture once again to know more about what is regions and what are availability zones what are the building blocks which we can use to build our architecture on aws platform let's go through this course once again and from the next lecture we are going to start practicals the very first practical is going to be on aws iam 
and after that we will create our first EC2 instance on AWS platform. So please like and subscribe my videos. Thank you. We'll see you in the next lecture.